The terror group ISIS is keeping up its fight against the West largely because of its cash supply. ISIS is able to get rich because it's figured out multiple ways to earn money. We're joined now by Aichem Kamel, the Middle East and North Africa director at the Eurasia Group. Aichem, thanks so much for being with us. Can you just first of all Thank explain you. how ISIS makes its money and how it's different from what we've seen from other terror groups? I think this is the most resilient terrorist organization we've ever seen. They have money from funders or backers uh, in, in the Persian Gulf, individuals there. Uh, uh, definitely from the central bank of Mosul that they've, they've seized uh, from oil trade that goes directly into Turkey or mostly into Turkey and selling ancient artifacts from the historical sites that they've, they've entered and taken control of. Uh, re really, they're, they're, and they do tax their people until today. Population under tax, under ISIS control does pay taxes. So it's really much more resilient than anything we've seen. So cutting off their flow of money is a challenge in a way that it, it, it isn't for other groups. The West has taken, in terms of its strategy in attacking ISIS, the approach is to focus on airstrikes. What do you make of this? Is this working? I think the strategy is not working at all. It's a strategy that revolves around limited engagement, air power, which can weaken ISIS at best, but not really defeat it. And as long as the, the idea that ISIS lives on and is able to at least retain control over territories between Iraq and Syria, that, uh, that is a very powerful message, I think. And then we need to confront that in terms of finding allies on the ground today in Iraq and Syria that can do the job. And it's, uh, it's a set of painful, I think, choices or very difficult choices that we have to do or make in Iraq and Syria. There's been a lot of talk about whether or not we should be aiming to contain or destroy ISIS. But isn't part of the problem that we're trying to fight an ideology, not necessarily a physical uh, army on the ground? And is it possible to either contain or destroy an ideology? Well, I, I think you can, you can do, you can destroy the, an ideology by weakening it militarily. We can definitely do more on that front. But also we need to have conversations with our allies, Turkey to close the borders between Syria and stop the flow of money and, and, and oil into ISIS zones. Uh, we need to talk to our Gulf allies, the Sunni states, and talk to them about re reforming their religious ideology, which is, in many respects, has been feeding ideologies of jihad uh, and, uh, and groups like ISIS and the Nusra Front. So we need to have a, a comprehensive strategy to defeat the organization militarily, to defeat the idea, and to, to really attract moderate Muslims and have them be part of the fight against ISIS. Um, Ayham, I want to ask you about, you just mentioned Gulf allies, uh, Saudi Arabia. Um, what's your understanding, or can you just let our viewers know, um, what's your understanding about the treatment of extremist views within the society there, within the kingdom of Saudi Arabia? Do you think that Saudi Arabia is doing enough to fight back against extremist ideology? I don't think so. That's, to put it bluntly, I think Saudi Arabia's educational system has in part contributed to the problem that we face today. The Wahhabist ideology, very conservative, has been feeding groups like ISIS, the Nusra Front, or the Mujahideen that we've seen in Afghanistan. Now, that sort of ideology might be helpful in containing Iran, uh, uh, definitely in weakening Iranian regional influence, but it comes with a cost. And I think it's about uh, uh, talking to the Saudis, finding ways that we can reform the system, uh, helping them pursue incremental change so that over time, I think, we, we empower moderates and not really allow this sort of uh, hatred Islamic ideology to spread. I think, uh, you know, when you talk about our allies, it seems that one of the challenges is also that among our ally states, they have their own uh, issues that they're dealing with, uh, whether it's Saudi Arabia in Yemen and, and various opinions on what to do with Bashar al-Assad. I think of the U.S. and Russia and how they're completely in disagreement about whether or not Bashar al-Assad should, should remain in power. Um, it seems like a, a it seems like a very difficult path to try and get everyone on board and to focus their energy on ISIS. 
I, absolutely. I think that's, uh, that's been a major obstacle in terms of finding a peace agreement in Syria so that we can unify everyone and have all the groups face the Islamic State. I think that would be productive. The reality is, uh, I think, for, them, for the U.S., uh, you cannot have a solution in Syria without Assad removed out of power, at least eventually. For Russia, I think they look at it as two separate issues. That The real issue is ISIS, and we need to focus on defeating ISIS. Assad is a different problem, and we'll take care of that later. Uh, I, I think, in, you know, given all, all that I see today, all, obviously taking Assad out of the equation is a better outcome, but it's very difficult to achieve, and we've been struggling to, to get that through for the past four or five years. I have Kamel. Thank you very much for joining us. Sure. Anytime.